So Netflix's Deb vs. Heard is an absolute disaster, with not only audiences panning this, but the critics that they're trying to hell it with, yeah, they're tearing it apart too. Now what's hilarious about this is AH's PR gets exactly what they wanted to. I mean, look at the viewership, it is number one, and yet, yeah, it's a huge loss for them. You know it's bad too, when even the audience that they want says, yeah, I mean, this is an absolute trash fire, and the audience itself, you know, the one that actually watched the trial, oh man, they are tearing this thing apart. Now, you can tell that Netflix and the director of this, oh, they know that this is a giant catastrophe, too. Why? Because they're trying to do damage control. They're doing it with Rolling Stone. Here's an idea, by the way. Maybe don't interview with places that lock your words behind a paywall, but it's beautiful here. They are failing on every front. YouTube, IMDB, Rotten Tomatoes and more. You and I, we're going to talk about this today. This, this really is fun times. This is fun times indeed. All right, so hey there to all you fine folks on this fine day, by the way. I hope you are doing excellently. So AH's newest PR push, I mean, it is filling and utterly. And it's amazing because they have all the eyes that they want around the world. Notice this, number one through Netflix in almost every single country that pops up. I mean everywhere here and despite all the money the show media push and more i mean this thing it is bombing and big time See, the funniest part of this giant failed push is the fact that the critics, the people that shill this stuff, yeah, they can't even get them on board. I mean, listen to what they have to say. The cinematic equivalent of armchair journalism. Netflix's new Depp vs. Her documentary series. Oh, it's typically well-produced, but frustratingly shallow. Oh, not good review at all. Here's CNN with The Wrecking Ball. The film suffers from its commitment to serve two masters, trying to get at the exclusive truth of what transpired between this famous couple while providing a jaundiced view, a jaundiced view of the way social media has poisoned a collective grasp of truth. Yeah, this is one of the places you would expect to be on board, and yet even they aren't with it. Now, other shill sites like The Hollywood Reporter say, yeah, this could be worse, but it couldn't be any more pointless. You also have places calling this mediocre, predictable, and conventional. And the Chicago Sun-Times says, yeah, you know, if we ever had a true crime documentary that needed the usual collection of talking head interviews with esteemed journalists, law enforcement veterans, legal experts, and more, this is it. But we never get that at all. They feel cut out and slighted. And that, to me, is hilarious. Even the positives read mostly negative, like Decider, for example, telling you that this, yeah, it makes for a very disjointed viewing experience that draws you in with trial footage. Footage, by the way, you could watch on your own, but places like Decider, I'm sure, are too lazy. But then it kicks you right back out with the mostly idiotic social media commentary that added nothing but noise to the whole trial. And that, that's supposed to be their lane of attack on this, saying social media influenced the jury. They're saying, nah, the trial itself. That's the viewing, and that, yeah, that's a own on AH, her PR, and their entire point. Then you get to the audiences, and the audiences, yeah, it is page after page of negative review, and the positives, they say things like, it's like watching a train wreck. You can't look away, and that tells you that this, it isn't reviewed because the thing is good. It's because, well, look at the mess that they've made. Now, Rotten Tomatoes has this habit of deleting anything that they don't like. So, to drive the point home of just how negative this is taken so far, I want to scroll through these three pages. You'll notice here that you'll have a three pop up every now and then. Remember, they consider three out of five and above a positive there's only 13% of those over three 
pages of audience feedback. I mean, mostly you're talking about disinterested here. This is one-sided. And again, that's exactly what this is. It is one-sided. It wants to give one narrative. That narrative is the jury, the world, they have no idea. But Emma Cooper, in presenting nothing about that, she knows. And the world catches on here. I mean, people, they're smarter than this, and they know when they're being played. Now, this negative feedback isn't just limited to sites like Rotten Tomatoes. If you go and check out IMDb, for example, you'll notice here that the score on IMDb out of 3,200 people voting is a 4.8. So they haven't even hit the middle ground here. When you click into the scores to see exactly what people are saying to, you'll notice the overwhelming majority here. They rate this thing as a 1 out of 10. 33% of viewers, they said that this is an absolute trash fire. That's over 1,100 votes for a 1 out of 10. And on the other side of that, you know, the people that support AH, the ones that are saying, yeah, this, this is going to retell the truth, they could only get in 150 people to do that. And they have been actively pushing, pushing behind the scenes, trying to get these scores up. I mean, it's amazing, and it shows you just how futile their attempts have been. Now, this reaction, it pretty much stays consistent along other social media platforms, too. I mean, if you look at YouTube, YouTube was the friendliest to Netflix. They gave this thing an algorithmic boost. They also allowed Netflix to flag the very creators that they stole their footage from. I really want to drive that home. They were told, no, I don't want our likenesses there. You don't have permission to use. They still, they took this stuff. They end up getting almost 3 million views, 2.8 million in three weeks. How does that turn out for them? It turns out really, really badly. I mean, look at this. I mean, it is consistent along the comments. People are telling them you're biased. They're telling them there's no point in doing this thing. They are tired of places like Netflix. Again, the entire trial it is available on the same platform that they're pushing this on. And I think people see right through it. Now, you can tell that Netflix and the director, they know that this was an epic screw-up, too. They had a chance to do something correct. They didn't. They tried to shill AH, and it has backfired spectacularly for them. It has cost them a lot of subscriptions. It has gotten them blowback from all sides of this and more. Even AH's camp is mad, from what I hear. Oh, man. Anyway, let me know what you think about this. And as always, appreciate the heck out of you. You make this stuff work. Thank you. Can't say that enough. Want to help out the channel, by the way? Links are in the description. Check those out. And thank you. Appreciate you. See you soon.